at CAST, we, uh, we started out as, a, as an organization really looking at assistive technology, really looking at how can we apply uh, powerful technology to individuals with disabilities to extend their potential and their abilities. And in the late 1980s, early 1990s, uh, we got together and said, what we really want to do is do something more transformative on a global scale. We'd like to do something like change the world or change the process of education. Um, and assistive technology is great, but also by that time there were a lot of folks uh, that were doing assistive technology, some of them far better than we could. And we also felt that by doing, staying with assistive technology, focused on individuals, that we were going to have to change the world one individual at a time. And that was going to kind of slow us down. So we shifted our approach away from individuals and towards the curriculum itself, standards, materials, methods, and assessment, and said, what if we take the fundamental flexibility inherent in the technology and in what we know about brain function, and we begin to apply it to the environment, the educational environment, the curriculum. How can we build in supports for the broadest range of students and have that waiting for that student because we know those students are going to be coming into the instructional environment? How can we get away from having to retrofit, continually retrofit, what we're doing, either the materials or the methods or the assessments of the standards, in order to accommodate the students we know we're going to have anyway. We came up with three core principles related to universal design for learning. And it was really the provision of um, multiple means of representation was the first one. So to connect to an individual's pattern recognition system, the more ways you can present information, whether it's auditorily, whether it's tactilely, whether it's through movement, whether it's in text, whether it's speaking, each of us reacts differently to patterns. Each of our pattern systems are triggered by different external stimuli. And so the more ways we can represent information, the better off we are. The second notion was tying into strategic networks. Each of us is, uh, has strengths and weaknesses in different areas and what we're able to initiate uh, move forward with and actually do and exhibit. And so the more ways we can allow students to exhibit what they know, not just paper and pencil, not just on a computer, but through dance and movement and video, song, any multiple ways we can do it. So um, multiple means of representation, multiple means of expression, multiple means of engagement. If we can have learning environments, if we can facilitate and create learning environments that allow this, and we are going a long way to building in support for diverse learner needs, and those students we know are coming into the classrooms. And I'm not suggesting in any way that universal design for learning means one size fits all. That's often a kind of criticism or question that we'll get at cast, and we really talk about one size fits all. We're talking about exactly the opposite. We're talking about as many options as we can possibly generate. 